Hey guys, don't mind me, I'm just uh, getting ready. We still have a few minutes. What a fantastic demo that was with the paper, with the flowers, right? Amazing. I'm just setting up, I'm just getting ready here, so I still have a few minutes. Hey everyone, as everybody's tuning in, how are you? I still have a few more minutes before we start. I'm just getting ready here, and today we're going to be doing my whoop, butterfly cookie with uh, royal icing. I'm going to show you how to frame it, and I'm going to show you how to fill it up with uh, isomold. We're also going to do my famous uh, shaker cookie so stay tuned we still have a few more minutes until i start and in the meantime where are you guys from everybody good morning i'm in new york by the way uh, my name is vanessa Greeley. for those of you who don't know me and it is almost it's actually 10 47 so i am early 10 minutes early where is everybody from Hey everyone, we're going to be doing uh, the butterfly cookie with royal icing. I'm going to show you how to frame the cookie. You can frame anything pretty much with royal icing. So you don't actually need to have any, um, any molds or anything like that. So stick around. We still have a few more minutes. We're going to wait for a few more people to join us. And in the meantime, where are you guys from? Ontario, Canada, hi, México, hola México, ¿cómo están? Muchos besos, muchos abrazos para México. I am here in New York, in Warwick, New York. It's actually raining today. México, beautiful work. I have so many wonderful friends in Canada as well. So guys, we're just gonna have a few more minutes until I start. What a fantastic demo that was with the flowers, right? Good afternoon, Nigeria. Wow, hey, Nigeria. It is 4.47, wow. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for hanging out with me. Southern Maryland, hey, Debbie. Nigeria in the house. So honored to have Nigeria, Mexico, Canada, Thank you so much for joining me. We still have a few more minutes. I'm just gonna wait for some people to, uh, to come in because I'm actually a little earlier. I just wanted to check the camera angle and all that stuff. So in the meantime, Buenos dias, Guatemala. Hola, Patti. Guatemalteca. Yo soy peruana, I am Peruvian. I was born and raised in Peru. Jennifer, I know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, usually fashionably a little late because i'm always running around doing stuff and today i happen to be early peru hola who's that loi ortiz hola uh, natalie from peru from missouri mexico hi guys how's the weather over there okay so we're bringing up audience yay Hi, Mercy from Lagos, Nigeria. Hello. Hey, Mercy. It's so awesome to see you guys or to have you guys from all over the place. Yes, it's great to see you too, Jennifer. Hello, Mariel. Uh, from Canada, Askia. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Askia and Beryl. Nice to say hi to you guys from Nigeria. Tigold, is that how you pronounce it? Or Olatun? I'm so sorry. I hope I'm not chopping off your name. <laughs> okay, I'm going to switch glasses because I can't really see what is glasses. I'm going to switch to my Elton John glasses. Ready? There you go. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Hey, how are you? I miss you, lady. 
one of my former students. Okay, guys, so just a quick um, summary what we're gonna do. So today I'm super excited to show you, hey from Pennsylvania, I'm super excited to show you how to do my butterfly cookie and also how to do the shaker cookie. Some of you may have already seen the shaker cookie, so I figure let me start with the with the butterfly cookie because I always say I'm gonna show you and I, I always run out of time, but this time I'll make sure to show you how to make the butterfly cookie first. Okay, hi Eskia, hi Grace from Nigeria. Wow, a lot of people from Nigeria, what an honor. So anyway, I think we have plenty of people, 59 people, oh my gosh. Yeah, thank you, I love my glasses. <laughs> they're fun, you know, they're fun. I'm not getting any younger, so. I play with my glasses. Hey, Jean. Hey, Mackenzie. Hi, how are you? Tina Cruz. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? How are you? All right, guys. I'm going to get right to it because we're building up audience right now. And so first and foremost, I'm going to show you some of the products that I'm going to be uh, using. I'm going to be using Royal Icing. Okay, so in order to do the framing for my cookie, for this cookie, I'm going to be doing uh, Royal Icing. Hi from Nigeria, Wisconsin. Hey, Debbie. <laughs> Thank you. They're my favorite glasses. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be using Royal Icing, and I just wanted to give a shout out to this amazing ladies, Jennifer and Kathleen. And by the way, hi, Peggy. I wanted to congratulate uh, Kathleen Lang because, you guys, she's been inducted to the Hall of Fame on our ISIS community. Yay, Kathleen. I am so thrilled, so happy for you. Thank you for everything you do for our community. And I wanted to give you and Jennifer also a shout out because I happen to use your awesome royal icing. And that's what I'm gonna be using today. Okay, hi from Michigan and Philippines. Hey, Philippines, how are you? So shout out to Kathleen Lan. Congratulations on your induction and thank you for this amazing product. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out really quick before we start. I wanna shout out, um, to see me cakes because we're going to be using um, isomalt for both of my cookies. This is for the butterfly cookies. We're using um, see me cakes isomalt. And last but not least, what else am I using? Oh, of course, I couldn't do without my fun sprinkles from Bryson from Cake Man versus Kate. <laughs> okay, so those are my three favorite products that we're going to be using, and of course. Last but not least, I'm also going to show you how to make this fun cookie. This is one of my favorite cookies. This is my most, this one and the shaker cookie. Well, all three cookies are, uh, seems to be a, a favorite. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I use edible images from uh, icing images. You know Deb, she, oh, oh, uh, wonderful um, customer support. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna bring you down in just a second. So first I'm just gonna give you a very very brief description of what I'm gonna be doing So you guys can follow me around. Okay, because you don't need to see this. You don't want to see that, right? so first and foremost I um, The base is just a cookie and it's a cookie that has been flooded with royal icing Okay, if you know, hey Kenya. Wow, Kenya. Hello. If you, um, if you know the floating consistency, it's just basically royal icing. Um, and I use about a pound of royal icing. I use about five to six tablespoons of, the, uh, of this powder, of this meringue powder. Okay, and then of course some water. And the consistency for floating for me, I mean, it, it varies depending on, on, on the weather, on the room. I mean, it's just so many variables, but I actually do it about uh, eight to 10 seconds, okay? That's my floating consistency, right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna bring you down. This is good for me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna bring you guys down so you can see what I'm doing. All right, just bear with me. Let me make sure that I am in focus here. Just a second. You guys let me know if you could see. Oop. No, you cannot see anything. 
Is that good? Sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Just give me two seconds. I thought I had calculated this, but I guess no. Just a second, guys. Still a little bit early. I think that should work. Does that work? All right. Sorry, guys. I apologize for the uh, moving around, and I think this should work. Okay. So, what I have here. So what I have here is just a template, you know, you can download it from anywhere. And then I have my small, cute little mat. This is a silicone mat. You can actually pipe on parchment paper as well. Okay, I already, oops, don't worry about that. That happens, you can always pipe it again. But you can actually either pipe on parchment paper or on a silicone mat. I would advise you to do it on a silicone mat because on parchment paper, then you can't torch it because it's paper. Okay, and uh, yeah, so let's do it on my, on my silicone mat. Um, I'm just gonna put my template underneath. And in order to save some time, I already did half of it. Okay, and hopefully everybody knows how to how to pipe. I'm doing it in orange color because either orange or yellow, it's easier to paint gold or, you know, any color. But if you were painting gold, I would advise you to do a, a base color of either orange or yellow or like a very light brown. Okay. Anyway, so I'm just going to pipe the, uh, the other wing. Everybody knows their piping tips. You want to make sure that it's connected. Okay, and that's it. So the beauty about working with royal icing is that you can actually frame any shape you want. I'm just doing the butterfly, but you can shape anything. You can shape a star, you can shape a building, you can shape anything. You can actually, you, what you're basically doing here is you're, you're making a frame to contain the isomalt, okay? So you can pipe with the piping consistency or the floating consistency, it doesn't matter. But as, long, as soon as it starts drying, then you can actually pour some isomalt. I'm using isomalt from Simi. Uh, this is just some isomalt that I had already um, melted before, so I'm gonna poop it, I'm gonna poop it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the microwave for a few seconds, okay? I'll be right back. So depending on the amount, you actually have to um, put it in the microwave for a few seconds at a time. Uh, also, please, please, please make sure to wear gloves, okay? If you have the many calluses that I have, and if you've been through the thousands of burns that I have gone through, then, um, yeah, you can do without them, but I would strongly suggest for you to to wear some gloves, okay? I'm just heating up my ice ball. Okay, in the meantime, do you guys have any questions so far? Okay, so just framing. Again, the reason for royal icing and doing it this way is so that you don't need molds, right? Because there's so many shapes that sometimes we want to do and we just simply don't have enough molds to pour isomel on it. So royal icing is an excellent medium to, to frame and to sort of like make your own molds. Okay, so I have some clear isomel from Simi Cakes right here. And I'm just waiting for those bubbles to settle down. Okay, so you just wait a few seconds. I'm just gonna pour for the, so the, in the interest of time, 
we can move on to something else. But you could see I still have a few bubbles there, so some bubbles may make it in there. And then at the same time, I have here on a plate, I have put a little bit of um, airbrush colors. And I use these airbrush colors from Chef Rubber. Okay. Um, airbrush colors are best to use with isomol because they're alcohol based. Okay. So I am using orange. I'm also using green. And I'm also using pink. Okay. So I did put a couple of just a a couple of drops. I think I'm going to put a little more of my orange on my plate. And I like to put it on a plate because it's easier to control. See that that would be too much. It's easier to control the amount of, um, of colors that go in it, right? Okay. And next, I'm just going to use my most expensive tool, a toothpick. I'm going to have it ready. I'm going to have actually my three toothpicks ready because I'm gonna be using them. One for each color. Okay, so this is still runny. Now I'm just going to pour. I'm gonna pour on this one because I poured that earlier and it's already dry. I'm pretty sure that you could still uh, pour it on the other one, but let's do this one first. So I pour a little bit of isomel right in the center and I don't want to overflow it. And just like you would with royal icing, sorry, I had my fan on, uh, then you just start spreading it out. If you feel like you don't have enough, then no big deal. Then you want to put a little more. And if you overflow, I mean, that's fine. You just, you don't want to really overflow because you want to have a nice clean look, right? But if you do, then no worries, because everything is fixable. Everything is fixable. Okay, so see, the reason for doing it on a, um, on a mat, on a silicone mat, which is heat resistant, is so you can torch. And again, it, I could do it on parchment paper, but then you have to be careful because um, it's paper, right? What I have here is just some of the airbrush colors, and that's my orange. I have here now some green. Now I'm gonna do some of the pink. And you see guys, this is all it takes. It doesn't take a whole lot of colors. And that's it. I'm gonna do my next one. It's just a little bit, oops. It's very easy to do too much. So just be careful. And again, just like with royal icing, you just wanna spread it out. I'm gonna use the other end of my toothpick, most expensive tool. <laughs> and now here comes the green. And you the swirls and of course you can do whatever you like but it's just this kind of reminds me like a stained glass and look how pretty that looks okay now let's see if the other one is it's not completely dry but let's see one way to find out let's see what happens it's not gonna melt some people think that um it may melt but it, it's see it doesn't melt it contains it so that's the beauty of royal icing if you didn't already know Just trying to get to those, to the sides. And like a swirling motion, just like you would with the royal icing when you're flooding, right? And you wanna cover everything. So you could see that my royal icing is thickening. So I'm just gonna torch it a little bit. And it's just very short bursts of heat. And that's so that I can just come back and be able to do my swirls. I'm gonna hit it again, whoops. That happens. So we don't call this burn, you guys. This is caramelized, okay? <laughs> there is an elegant way in our world to call this burn and it's called caramelized because first of all, it is sugar. So you're not saying, you're not lying when you say caramelized, <laughs> okay. I do the same thing with my cakes. 
you know, like the edges of the cake, sometimes they are caramelized. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go back with, oops, that was supposed to be orange. That's okay. There's no uh, screw-ups, only happy accidents, right? So it's a little thick, and so I'm just gonna hit it again just to help it relax a little. And sometimes when you do that, some of those bubbles may come to the surface, which is fine. Now this is a little too thick already and it's not gonna pour. So I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave for a couple of, for a couple of seconds, okay? Be right back. In the meantime, any questions? Hello from Alabama. Hey, Nigeria. Wow, it seems like Nigeria is up, huh? South Carolina. Okay, so again, I have some of my isomold, and you see those bubbles. You want to let them settle down. Hello from Alabama. Okay. So now I'm just gonna pour, and please, 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 guys, please, please wear gloves, okay? Don't do what I do, do what I say. I'm just gonna put a little bit more. My freezer is literally next to me, so if anything should happen, um, I can just stick my hand in there. But hopefully will, nothing will happen. The reason why I don't wear it sometimes, uh, my gloves, is because I have a... Um, sometimes I get a rush on my hands. Okay, so again, I'm going to go back and do my orange in no particular order. And then some of that green. Uh, and let's do some of that pinky as well. And that's it. How fun is that? You frame whatever you want to frame, let the realizing um, dry for just a few more, for a few seconds. Can you use anything else besides a heat gun? You mean to, to melt the, um, uh, no, because it's, you know, it's just easier that way, right? You just, I would advise that if, you, if you're working with sugar, you should definitely invest on a torch. It's just, it's just very handy, okay? Um, anyway, so this is it, you guys. Okay, then you wait for this to be completely uh, cold. And by the way, my mat, sometimes for whatever reason, my mats, uh, I don't know if it's the temperature in the room, but sometimes my ass almost, when I, when I uh, hit it with some uh, color, especially gel colors, it tends to stick to my mat. So what I did before I started, I actually uh, coated it with just a very, very thin, a very, very thin coat of vegetable oil. And you see it's, it's nice and, and uh, slippery a little bit, but just a little bit. You don't want to saturate it, just a little bit of um, vegetable oil, and then you pipe your shape, and then you fill it up with an uh, isomold, okay? I already have some wings that are already, that they have already dry. And remember what I told you, parchment paper? Uh-huh, <laughs> okay. This is what happens when, when you're rushing and, and you think you can get away with things. Well, okay, so always best to use a silicone mat. Be careful whenever, anytime you use a parchment paper. Okay, so these wings are already uh, dry. This wing was actually right here. So when I torch it, <laughs> it lit up the paper. So be very careful, guys. All right, so I have a few wings here. And now notice that some of my wings, because I was rushing and I wanted to have some of them ready for this demo, uh, some of my wings have those bubbles. But I don't care. I actually think that it adds, you know, it's a feature. <laughs> Anytime something doesn't go your way, treat it as a feature, okay? And then you'll see once the, um, the wings are completely dry and cold, right? Dry because of the royal icing and then cold because of the isomalt. 
um, it's actually very easy to peel. Now, don't rush it. If it doesn't want to peel off, that's because it's not ready for you. So you just got to be patient, okay? My room right now, it's a little bit um, humid for some reason. So I'm just going to be very careful. I'm molding this. Again, it should come out easy. If it doesn't, then it's not ready yet. At first I thought, hey, I'm not gonna show them this. <laughs> but then it's like, who are we kidding? Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes, right? And then I thought, ah, I better remind you what not to do. Okay. So I have these two wings. <clears throat> Yes, I like I like the colors as well. Yes, uh, Ilania, nothing is perfect. That's the beauty of nature, right? Okay, so I have both of my wings here. Sometimes I forget whether they go this way or that way, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now that the wings are ready. Uh, then you can actually decide whether or not you want to pipe on top, okay? Like I like I did on on this cookie. This cookie's a little beat up already because it's been through so many demos and so many uh, classes. And even though I sealed it with an, an edible lacquer that I'm gonna show you, I use this edible lacquer from where is this edible lacquer from? Uh, I can't pronounce it, but I think Chef Robert sells this edible lacquer, okay? And it's great. It seals all your sugar work, your chocolate work, anything. It's edible, and it seals it, and it helps prevent the uh, humidity from doing a number on all your pieces or sugar pieces. But eventually, the humidity does its, does its thing, you know? I mean, this, this cookie is like, I don't know how many months old, right? So it did its job for a while. Um, so the next thing uh, I would do is, in this particular cookie, I piped over, so you could do the same. And uh, maybe it'll be an opportunity to hide my burnt, excuse me, my caramelization, <laughs> right? So I'm just gonna pipe over. I'm gonna stop breathing for a second. You all know what I mean, right? Okay, and then, you know, it's up to you if you want to add more details. I'm rushing it a little bit, it's not a big deal. Of course, you don't want to, you don't want to overcrowd your design, right? So I would probably cut the tip of my bag a little bit uh, smaller so it's not so thick because you know we want to see the the uh, the window that we just I mean the the, the sugar right the, those those wonderful colors that we just did the swirls right but it's a demo and I'm barely squeezing so and let's do it over here too All right, and so that's basically it. Once you have your butterflies, then you can just go ahead and paint it with uh, your edible colors. Um, let me show you which colors I use in just a second. Um, now, I use a different color, uh, but this particular color says non-toxic. Non-toxic does not mean edible, okay? Non-toxic means you won't die if you eat it, but it's not edible. 
Um, so I use this for pieces that are meant to just be displayed, not for consumption. I don't use this for my clients, okay? Um, I do have one from uh, Crystal Colors that is edible and it's, it's, uh, it's certified. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this one because nobody is gonna eat it. <laughs> okay, so all I do is just add a little bit of, I gotta turn on my, turn off my, um, my fan, otherwise my gold color is gonna fly everywhere. So again, this is this is just for display purposes, okay? It's not meant for consumption. And you know, this is just for the demo, is what I just had handy. Okay. Um, now I use that with some uh, alcohol and I use Everclear. I don't know if it's legal and believe it or not, in some uh, countries or some even, some states even, Everclear is not legal. So, yeah, sorry guys. Well, if, if you don't have that available, you can always use lemon extract. Um, you can use also uh, vodka. The only thing with vodka is that, um, oh, excuse me guys, I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get my brush. The only thing about the vodka is that um, it has some sugar, but it's not a big deal. I just like to use the Everclear because it's 95% alcohol, okay? I'm just gonna move on to, this one is too recent, so I'm not gonna be able to paint that one, but just to show you, just to show you. I'm gonna put, let's put that to the side. Just to show you the reason for piping. I mean, if you're gonna color in gold, right? So the reason for... For uh, coloring your isomol, I mean, your, your uh, royal icing. This is a little too watery, okay? But if you miss a spot, then it's not so obvious. All right, so that's basically it. This is basically what you would do, like I did here. All right, so then just, you know, just paint it all around. Once this is completely dry, then you just paint it in any color you want. Again, I use uh, alcohol so that it dries fast because you don't want to keep any of this wet, okay? And then uh, last but not least on this particular cookie, is um, how to assemble it. For this cookie, um, I basically used the same cookie cutter, okay? I did the template using the same cookie cutter. And so, yeah, you could do that, or you can just assemble it uh, on any cookie, really. And then how I do that is the question, right? Is the million dollar question. Uh, once again, I use my most expensive tools, <laughs> which is my, my toothpicks. Oopsie. I'm just going to put this to the side. See, it's completely, um, it's still kind of wet. So I'm just going to put it to the side for now. this up here and over here okay so if you have a cookie it doesn't matter right all you do is this is probably a, a, a very big cookie so I just pipe a little a line in the center and then you have to prop it. And this is where your your toothpicks come in handy. Oops. I'm actually anchoring my 
my toothpick to the to the board. It doesn't help that I'm shaking for no apparent reason. And I'm trying to do it in an angle. And that's it. You would do the same thing with your other wing. And this is of course after you piped it and after you painted it, uh, then you would do the same exact thing with your other wing, you prop it, right? And then after you propped it and after you let it dry completely, then you pipe the body on top. And that's basically, you could even leave it like that, you know, so that it's, so it's only one side that it's, um, that is propped, okay? So that's basically how I let it, um, let it dry. So now you understand how it's done, right? So a little blob in the middle, then prop it, and then once this is completely dry, then I just pipe the uh, the body. And that's it for this cookie. Do you guys have any questions about this particular cookie before we move on to the shaker cookie? Uh, normal caramel can be, can be, I'm not sure what you mean, Edna. Um, Fascinating. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, any other questions? It is not legal here in Florida. Yo, oh, I'm sorry, Jackie. I know, but you can use uh, lemon extract instead. Instead of the uh, alcohol, you can use vodka also. Anything that has high content of sugar, uh, um, of sugar, uh, high content of alcohol. This particular one is 95% alcohol. Okay. Uh, next is the uh, lemon extract. All right, so this is it for this cookie, guys. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the, the shaker cookie. If you don't have any questions, um, I'll, I'll move on. Now let's do the shaker cookie. We're gonna shake it, shake it. This is the, my kitty cat, and it's basically two cookies. Again, my cookie on the bottom, I let it caramelized. Learn the term. <laughs> it's not burnt, it's caramelized, okay? So, um, for purposes of this demo, it's, it's perfectly okay. For my clients, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't give something like that, but this is a demo, so I'm not stressing about it. And you guys know better. Um, anyway, so this image, I downloaded it from the, from the internet. I think, I believe it's a Japanese character. I'm not, I'm not really entirely sure. I just happened to see it and I loved it and I thought how cool would it be if it was grabbing a, um, you know, a glass full of uh, sprinkles. How fun is that? So I baked two cookies. The trick is you wanna bake two cookies now this, I already went ahead and, and cheated a little bit and I added some details, but what you want to have is you want to have two cookies. You do not want to start on any of the decoration at all. So forget about this. This is just for the, for the purposes of the demo. So you're going to have two cookies and they're going to mirror each other. You want to make sure that the two cookies are the same size, right? And if they're not the same size, if you need to scrape it off, then you just do that, see? No big deal. But make sure that you don't have all those crumbs, right? So, okay, so you have your two cookies. And I roll my cookie about a quarter of an inch, okay? So my cookies are about a quarter of an inch. And then what you do is, and again, do not do this part at all. You can stencil it out. You know, this, I did this, I drew it with, a, with an edible marker. Okay. And um, because if you go ahead like I did here, then you're not going to be able to, to flatten it out, right? To, to pour your isomal. So you want to make sure that you do not do this. I did this for the purposes of the demo only. Okay, so then you want to open it up and then you're gonna fill it in with your isomalt. Okay, so, whoops. 
So that's what I'm going to do first. I already did this one. So I'm just going to do this other one just to show you. Uh, I'm just cleaning out all those crumbs. And I'll be right back. I'm going to heat up some of my isomol. Any questions in the meantime? Uh, normal caramel can be used. Do you mean uh, normal caramel? You mean like to fill in the the royal icing frame? Yeah. I mean, as long as it hardens, right? As long as your caramel hardens, because if it doesn't, then you won't be able to pick it up. So yeah, you can cook your own sugar and you can you can make your own caramel and flavor it and do whatever you whatever you like. But again, you gotta make sure to cook it to the proper temperature so that the caramel is nice and um, and hard, right? Okay, so this is not ready yet. I'm gonna heat it up again. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? All right, so we're gonna fill this up. Once again, you have those a bottle, or those those bubbles rather. I'm just gonna let it settle down before pouring it in. Okay, now when you pour, okay, you do not want to fill it up all the way. You only want to fill it up maybe a third of the way or half, but preferably a third of the way. Okay, so once again, I pour in the center and then just like you would with um, royal icing, you swirl it around and you want to make sure that you cover every single area, every single little corner. Okay, don't worry about those bubbles. I am rushing it, but you would normally let it wait for a few more minutes. And I'm pouring in just a little more because I didn't pour enough. I really can't see these corners here. I hope I'm hitting them. Yeah, yeah. You want to make sure that it's completely sealed because otherwise your sprinkles are going to come off flying <laughs> okay so that's it for that again just make sure that you don't fill it up all the way to the top otherwise we're not going to have any room for your sprinkles to go in there okay so i'm going to put this to the side to let it cool off and i have my little fan going on the side the next thing that we're going to do is So in the interest of time, I went ahead and, and piped the um, some of the sections and notice how I skipped, you know, every other every other part. And of course, I forgot to prepare my my white royal icing. <laughs> but Assuming that this is white, um, the reason why I do it this way, you know, you want to pipe some sections, every other section is because if you pipe everything at once, then everything is going to merge in, okay? So assuming that this is white, then, hey, the orange doesn't look too bad. <laughs> it's a whimsical cat, right? So then just fill in. I stopped talking when I pipe, and I'm sure a lot of you will probably be nodding. Yeah, me too. I stop talking sometimes, and I stop breathing sometimes. <laughs> anyway, so I forgot to prepare my, my white royal icing, but you get the idea, right? So first, you want to make sure to pipe uh, all of the, uh, every other section so that, because if you pipe everything at once, it's all going to merge in. So you pipe every other section, you let that dry, you finish that up, 
And then like movie magic, I already have one here prepared for you. The next thing that I that I'll do is then um Hey Jackie. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing, just to give it that kind of um, uh, cartoonish sort of look, right? I just use my edible marker and then the, the trick about this is don't overthink it. Just whatever your marker wants to land, then that's it. And if you think that you messed up, like I did here, for example, a little bit, you know, I piped a little too far out, don't worry because the marker is an opportunity for you to, to fix any little imperfection that you think you have. And I think you think because nobody else will know but you. Okay. And then we're gonna do the glass. We're gonna do the little hands. It's supposed to be holding the glass. Don't stress if it doesn't come out perfect, right? I'm gonna continue with the outline of the glass. Let's do the pause. Okay, and then you can pipe the three little dots here for the pause, just like I did here. And then also you can shade it as well. You can just use some edible colors because it's completely white, you see the difference. Sometimes it needs some highlights just to make it pop. Okay. And what else are we gonna do here? Now we're gonna do the eyes, and the eyes is the easiest thing, right? Because it's just, I first do it very lightly, and then only when I'm sure, I go back again. And then the little nose, and but we're missing one thing. Every drink needs a straw. So to do the straw, I just took a piece of my um, ice in image and I cheated again, just in the interest of time. And I already colored one with edible markers. So this one has a back end. Make sure to, to peel it off. <laughs> Sometimes I forget, okay? This has a back end. And do not throw the back end away because on a sheet like this, right? You can actually cut um, four inches or maybe six inches, right? And you can actually use this for your cake. This is an acetate sheet. And so it's a tool. So the acetate sheet, you can spread here your buttercream and then wrap it around your cake, uh, put it in the fridge and then voila. So you have a nice acetate strip, so do not throw it away, okay? So I have here my Again, these are my, my edible colors. These are from Wilton. And I think I have mentioned before that someone did a whole research on a whole bunch of different edible markers. And for some reason, most of edible markers, they bleed. And so this person who I apologize, I don't remember her name. I will make it my business to find her name because I, I really would like to give her credit for all the effort that she put into trying to do this research. She found out that Wilton is actually a brand of edible markers that does not bleed. And I've tested them and it is true. 
the black from Wilton does not bleed. This one does. And this one doesn't. Okay, so give that a try. Hopefully they haven't changed anything on their on the makings of the markers. And it's just as simple as that. Just want to color it in. Right? I'm going to get rid of that back in right now because I know I will forget. Nothing fancy. Okay. Next. Now, the thing about this is that you want to line it up, right? I'm just going to cut enough so that it goes down to the center. And then I'm going to save the rest to put inside a drink. to secure it that's an oopsie okay and so that's that's pretty much it guys um, next is then Let's see if it's ready. Yeah, I think it's ready. You wanna make sure that it's ready, that it's completely cold, right? If it doesn't peel off as easily, then it's not ready, guys. And look, I couldn't see very well, so I missed a little spot there, but it's not a big deal. The next thing I'm gonna do is, now I need to line up my, my straw I need to line it up, and I think it's a little too long, so I'm just gonna cut a piece. And I think it's gonna go right in here. Because I want it to look, I wanted the straw to look like it's right in the center, right? Um, and then of course we're missing our sprinkles we want to do sprinkles galore i have this fun spoon and i believe uh peggy tucker probably has them i saw her using the spoon because it's um i mean i saw it before but i also saw her using it with an uh, isomer which is very clever i believe she carries this um the spoons, which are very, very useful. These are for sauces when you're plating uh, desserts. It's just, you know, it, it, it creates a nice drizzle. And how clever it is to use it with sugar because it's, it's metal, right? But I also use it to, for other things. <laughs> okay. So of course you wanna make sure that your sprinkles are not too big because otherwise you won't be able to shake, right? This are my sprinkles from Bryson. Okay, and I think I have enough. Want to make sure that they're all in there, otherwise your cookie is not going to be able to close. And I'm going to try to keep this on top. And last but not least, Don't put a whole lot of royal icing. I mean, you want to seal it, but you don't want to, especially on the sides, okay? Because once you sandwich it together, some of the royal icing is gonna go in. So you want to try to stay away from the edge, okay? And then close. And voila! You have a shaker cookie. Oops. <laughs> All right, you guys. So 
that's it for the shaker cookie. So we did the butterfly, we did the shaker cookie. And then the last cookie I'm gonna show you. See, this is what happens if you don't seal it. Oops, sorry about that. If you don't seal it well, my some of my like the smaller sprinkles are coming off. So you wanna make sure to you wanna make sure to cover all that up. Okay, see? <laughs> you will do a much better job. All right, you guys. So that's the sugar cookie. Last but not least, I'm gonna bring you up now. Hello. Okay, last but not least, this cookie. So you know how we did the, uh, the shaker cookie, right? Where this is basically a cookie with an opening and then you pour your isomalt. So what I did here is I use my edible, um, edible images and I place them. Uh, I first did like a very thin layer of the royal uh, of the um of the isomold very very thin layer of the isomold and then i glue my images my edible images you can't see with the light okay and then um once you glue that then you pour another sheet of um of isomold so you're basically sandwiching the uh, edible images between two layers of isomold if that makes any sense Okay, so, and these are my edible images. I actually painted it. I took a, um, a watercolor class, which is a lot of fun, and I, I'm having so much fun with that. I'm learning to paint uh, watercolor because I'm a perfectionist, and I love watercolor because I love the perfect imperfection of the watercolor. So, I did this painting, I printed it on my edible image, and then I, I cut it down, uh, you know, and then voila. So, if you guys don't have any more questions, or, or do you guys have any questions? I think that's, that's pretty much it. You know, once again, we did the shaker cookie, and I finally I got to do the butterfly, because we usually don't have any time. I have 15 minutes. Oh, okay. I do? Oh my gosh, I'm always running out of time. <laughs> this time I have 15 minutes. So, if you guys have any questions, Let's see, let's see your questions. Thank you, Celebration House. Do you have an instruction sheet? I do, uh, those are for my students. Um, but if you email me, you guys can message me. I, you can find me, by the way, my website is um, chefgreeley.com, C-H-E-F-G-R-E-E-L-E-Y.com. And my Facebook page is also Chef Greeley. And my Instagram, guess what? Chef Greeley. It's all Chef Greeley. Any other questions? Any more questions? So you guys stay tuned, okay? Because there's a lot more coming up. This is such a fun idea. I am so happy and so grateful to everyone that uh, put this together from uh, ISIS, our wonderful committee. Thank you so much for putting all, all of this together for you guys so you guys can enjoy it. So many wonderful instructors, so many different mediums that you can work with. And I really hope that I can inspire you to make your own creation. So think outside the box. This is all you could do. Yes, yeah, royal icing. Oh, the, was the front of the, oh, what was that thing you know? What was the question about the mason jar? I didn't see the question about the mason jar. Yes, the front of the, of the, um, of the cookie, you mean this part? Yes, this is royal icing as well. So what I did with the, with the background, I, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Can I see the butterfly again? Oh, sure. Okay, wait, let me, let me show the butterfly. That's the butterfly. It's a little beat up by now. <laughs> and okay, so the background, I did a very uh, rustic and a very quick pass with the blue royal icing. Okay, so just boom royalizing it doesn't matter you don't have to be uh you know it doesn't have to be perfect you're just trying to coat it a very light coat 
and then you let that blue the very light blue you let it um you let it dry for a little bit and then you want to coat it with white when you coat it with white then uh you just do your lines and when you do your lines then that's how the blue comes through i hope that makes sense okay is the top of the butterfly edible that's an excellent question so I know that there's a lot of concerns. Yeah, chefgreely.com, thank you. Thank you for sharing. That's my, um, my website and also my Facebook and also my Instagram. Um, is it edible? It's an excellent question. The, the answer is yes, it's edible, but no, you don't wanna eat too much of it, okay? This is isomal. And somebody else was asking before whether or not you could use caramel. Yes, you can, but you have to make sure to cook the sugar at the proper temperature. Another thing that you can do uh, without, if you don't want to use um, isomalt, you can actually melt some hard candy. I keep my, ready? This is my hard candy jar. <laughs> this is um, my Jolly Ranchers. These are my guilty pleasures. I keep my, Jolly Rancher jar handy because anytime I'm working, I'm always eating. <laughs> I have to have something, right? So, but bottom line is that you could actually use Rolly, uh, Rolly, Jolly Ranchers uh, or any hard candy that doesn't have anything in it, see? So this is already a sugar that has been cooked to the proper temperature. And all you have to do is just crush it, melt it, and then, fill in your you know whatever frame you did for your um you know butterfly or whatever other frame you you did okay can i use rice paper for the orange images it's an excellent question too um no because the rice paper dissolves very easily you could try it but it's just it doesn't stand the heat very well and when I'm pouring, I'm pouring to 180 degrees or, you know, so it's really hot. I've tried it, but it, it just disintegrates. It, it disintegrates. So that's, that's why I use icing images. Uh, for the jar, is the isomer only in open jar? For the jar, yes, the jar is, is an open. Let me show you the cookie, just a second. So I have a cookie with an opening and then I fill up one sheet of the, you know, like a very thin layer of the isomol or, or whatever candy you want to use, a very thin um, layer. And then you put your eyes in images, you glue in there. You, it doesn't have to be like lemons and limes like I did here. You can do, um, you know, you can put, you can draw or paint um, berries, for example, you know, like a nice martini drink, maybe some olives. <gasps> How fun is that? Oh, I'm going to do that next. <laughs> um, yes. And then after you do the layer of isomol or whatever sugar, and then you glue your icing, your icing uh, images, and then you want to do another layer of the sugar. Where can I get the paper for the images? And what is it called? It's, um, these are icing sheets. It's called icing sheets from, um, thank you, Kathy. Love you too. <laughs> these are icing sheets from, um, icing images is the name of the company. Yes. Thank you, Marsha. It's called icing images, the name of the company. Okay. Any more questions? I think I still have, let's see, 10 minutes. Any more questions? Uh, Isomol and edible icing sheets from recent demo of yours. Yay! All right, Marilyn. Yes, please give it a go. I, I would love to see what you come up with. Absolutely. Yes. Any more questions? So in the meantime, I see, you see my butterfly is drying. And this is how, you know, this butterfly has one wind down and one up. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's been amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you again to uh, Jennifer and everybody of uh, the whole committee that put this together. 
Once again, a last quick shout out to Kathleen Lang. Congratulations, Kathy, so happy for you. You've been inducted to uh, ISIS Hall of Fame. And hey, Beatrice, hi, Patricia. And so, yes, thank you also to all of our sponsors, you know, uh, See Me Cakes, uh, sprinkles from Bryson. Uh, speaking of Kathleen Lang, her royal icing. This is what I use: five to six tablespoons for one pound. Um, and uh, icing images. And that's all I got, you guys. Happy Sunday, and stay tuned because there's a lot more fun stuff for you guys to do. Okay, stay tuned and have fun. Mwah. Be safe. <laughs>